Chapter 1, Lesson 5, Negative Exponents. Unit fractions can be written as a power with a negative exponent. The laws of exponents apply to negative exponents. You can use exponents to represent very small numbers. Negative powers are the result of repeated division. Any non-zero number to the power of one is, or power of zero is one. Any non-zero number to the negative n power is the multiplicative inverse of its nth power. So first let's start with that zero property, or zero power, excuse me. If I had five to the zero, it equals one. X to the zero equals one. 3x in parentheses to the 0 equals 1. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. I don't care how complicated it looks. If it's raised to the 0 power, it's 1. Now be careful in instances like this. The difference between this one and this one is that up here the 3x is in parentheses which means that 0 applies to the 3 and the x. However, down here, the 0 is not outside of parentheses and means it only applies to the x. So x to the 0 power is 1, but we would bring down that 3, so the answer here is 3. So be careful when you have your 0 powers. Make sure you're not applying it things it shouldn't be applied to. Now, some of you might say, well, why? Why is anything to the zero power one? Let's take a moment here, and let's talk about the power of three. We have three to the third power, which is three times three times three, which equals 27. We have 3 squared, which equals 3 times 3, which equals 9. 3 to the first, which equals just 1, 3, and it equals 3. Our next logical uh, number would be 3 to the 0 power, and I'm telling you it equals 1. Look at the patterns. Obviously, on the left, our exponents decrease by 1, 3, 2, 1, 0. If you look in the middle section, I lose a 3 every time. I have 3 3s, 2 3s, 1 3, no 3s. What's really happening here is you're dividing by 3. If I took 3 to the third and divided by 3 to the first, I would get 3 squared. Same thing. Divide by 3 to the first, I'd get 3 to the first. Same thing. Divide by 3 to the first, I'd get 3 to the 0. In the middle, if you divide by 3, that just means one of those 3's go away and cancels out to be 1. On the right, same pattern. Divide by 3, divide by 3. Therefore, when you divide by 3 again, that gives you 1. So anything to the 0 power equals 1. Now let me branch off of this and talk about negative exponents. Okay, so let's stick with our pattern. If I divide by 3 again, I would get 3 to the negative 1. Now this one, if I divide by 3 again, I'm going to have 1 divided by 3. Let's keep going. 3 to the negative 2 equals divide by 3 again. Let's see what happens here. I do. I'll do it down a little. 1 third divided by 3, which remember is just 3 over 1. Your rule for dividing fractions is you keep the first one, change it to multiplication, and multiply by the reciprocal. So this next one would be 1 over 9. Hmm. 
3 to the negative 3 equals, divide by 3 again, what's going to keep happening is you just multiply that denominator by 3. Also, not a coincidence that they match up to those numbers. So really, this is 1 over 3 to the positive 1, 1 over 3 squared, because 3 squared equals 9, 1 over 3 cubed, which equals 27. So all you're doing then with your shortcut method is taking that exponent that's negative and then saying, well, it's really 1 over 3 to that positive exponent, which, of course, you would then simplify 3 to the third to be 27. So let's actually do some examples here. 6 to the negative 3 is really 1 over 6 to the positive 3. You just take it. Now, this number right now, 6 to the negative 3, is in the numerator. We want to move it to that denominator because it's got a negative exponent. And now let's figure out what 6 to the third is. Type that in your calculator. You get 1 over 216. Letter B is 1 over a to the positive 5. Can't do anything with that variable, so that's our answer. Letter C, 1 over 7 to the positive 2, which is 1 over 7 squared is 49. B to the negative 4 is 1 over B to the positive 4. When you have variables, it's almost easier. Letter E, 5 to the 0, 1. Letter F, m to the negative 3, is 1 over m to the positive 3. Now write each fraction as an expression using a negative exponent other than negative 1. So now we're going backwards. I have 1 over 5 squared. If I wanted to move that 5 squared in the numerator, I'd negate it. So it's 5 to the negative 2. Letter B, 8 to the negative 3. Letter C, careful. This 2 stays where it is, stays in that numerator. Now to C to the 5th, to move it up, I make that a negative 5th power. So when you have numbers that have positive exponents, they stay where they are. If that 2 were in the denominator, it would stay in the denominator. Now the direction set an exponent other than 1. You might think, well, this is 4 to the negative 1. I don't want an exponent of negative 1. But there's a way we can change 4. I can change 4 to be 2 squared, because 2 squared is 4. So this is the same as 1 over 2 squared, which means it would be 2 to the negative 2. And I avoided the use of the negative 1 exponent. Look at letter E. 36 is the same as 6 to the second power. So this is 1 over 6 squared, or 6 to the negative 2. Letter F, 1 over 27. Well, nothing squared is 27. However, 3 to the third power is 27. So this would be 3 to the negative 3. Now let's do some operations. Multiplying and divide with negative exponents. The product of powers and the quotient of powers rules can be used to multiply and divide powers with negative exponents. Simplify the expression, rewrite using power, or positive exponents. You're still going to use your same rules, which we, we've practiced before even with negative exponents. Your rule here is to keep the base and add the exponents. So 3 plus negative 5, your exponent is negative 2. Now, it says to rewrite using positive exponents, so from here we take it a step further and say 1 over 5 squared, and 5 squared is 25, so 1 over 25. 
Letter B, same rule, we keep the base, add the exponents, so negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. So we have 3 to the negative 6, which is really 1 over 3 to the positive 6. Well, 3 to the positive 6 is 729. Use your calculator for that one. So you have 1 over 729. Again, we keep the base and add the exponents. This would be a positive 5. It's already positive. So that's it. We're done with C. If it's already positive, leave it alone. Now let's talk about our quotient rule. Now be careful. These can be a little tricky with negatives. I keep the base, but I subtract the exponents. Negative 1 minus negative Four. It's not negative 1 minus 4, it's negative 1 minus negative 4. Well, this is really like plus plus because double negatives make positives, which means it's w to the positive 3. It's positive, so that's our answer. Letter E is 11. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So it's 11 to the negative second power, which is 1 over 11 to the positive second power, which is 1 over 121. Letter F, keep the base, subtract the exponents. Negative 4 minus negative 7. Double negatives make a positive. This results in a positive 3. We want positive exponents, so that's the answer to F. Let's try ones that look a little complicated. Look at each piece separately. I'm going to focus on just the X's. And they're multiplying together. I keep the base and add the exponents. 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. Now look at your y's. Keep the base. Add the exponents. Negative 1 plus negative 2 is negative 3. However, we have negative exponents. Whenever you have negative exponents, start a fraction. Well, x to the negative 1 would be 1 over x to the positive 1. y to the negative 3 would be 1 over y to the positive 3, but really we can combine that into one fraction by multiplying, so it's 1 over x, y to the third. And remember, this was x to the positive 1, which we can just write as x. Let's look at h. We've got a couple 2's here. Keep the base, add the exponents. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. The x's keep the base, add the exponents. Negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. Well, the 2 has a negative exponent, so I'm going to move that to the bottom and leave it with a positive 1. However, since x to the first already is positive, it's going to stay exactly where it is in the numerator. So that's our answer, but to make it a little bit neater, we don't need to write those exponents of 1, so it's just x over 2. Letter I. We have the number 3, and over in the second parentheses, we have an invisible 1. So 3 times 1 is 3. We still multiply. Then we have a to the first and a to the negative 3. Add them. 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. Now, remember, this 3 has a positive 1 exponent. We don't always write the exponents because in math we like it to look very neat, and those 1 exponents can make it look sloppy. So since the 3 is positive, has a positive exponent, I should say, we leave that in the numerator because it's already in a numerator. When you don't have a fraction, the number that you have 
is automatically in the numerator. And then a to the negative 2 moves to the denominator and becomes a to the positive 2. Letter J. Look at them piece by piece. We subtract the exponents. So 2 minus negative 1 is really 2 plus 1. So it's a to the third. Now look at your b's. b to the negative 2, b to the negative 2. Well, negative 2 minus negative 2 actually cancels out to be 0. But remember, anything to the 0 power is 1. So this is really a to the third. A shortcut way. If you would have noticed right away that those are the same exact thing, you could just cancel from there because they're the same. Letter K, look at your numbers first. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Then your X's keep the base, subtract the exponents. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So this is like one we have did before. The 3 has a positive 1 exponent, so it stays in the numerator. However, the x with the negative exponent moves to the denominator to make it a positive exponent. Letter L, we've got c squared and c squared, those cancel out. d cubed and d cubed, those cancel out. e to the negative fifth and e to the negative fifth also cancel out. If everything cancels out, your answer is 1. It's not 0 because any number divided by itself is 1 because it goes in one time. It doesn't go in 0, it goes in once.